from the KC State Bank Digital First Studio. This is a Good Day Live Digital Exclusive. Well, here we are today in an element that might be different because you're used to seeing Lori Carpenter talking about tax tips and you're used to seeing Sammy talking about the symphony. So today we're melding both worlds as part of this podcast to really bring together for two reasons. One, for all of you mus musicians and artists out there, you're about to get some uh, some speak about taxes that hopefully will benefit you in the long run. And ultimately, Lori is a huge supporter of the Terre Haute Symphony Orchestra because she's passionate not only as a person in the community, but as a musician herself who plays. So ladies, first of all, welcome. Thank you. It's great, great to be here. Great to have both of you. Um, first things first, I think if we could jump right into some of this tax conversation, because I have a feeling that Sammy's going to be listening with intent ears as well as anybody out there who does any of this side hustle gig work with music. Um, this is an interesting conversation to have because there are people out there who probably don't realize if they're a, a gig employee as a musician that there are some legal ramifications to what they do tax-wise, aren't there? There sure are. They they need to make sure that they're reporting, they're paying attention to and reporting all of their income, whether it's cash, whether it's a check, there, there's an amount that you've got to pay attention and get that reported. So when you say report it, this is once again an area where I don't have the knowledge to know, but what is the form that they would be using to report their income on? Well, it depends. They, they have several options. The most common one is going to be a Schedule C where they say, I have a small business, small gig, side hustle, and they just say, here's what my income was, here's what my expenses were right on that form. Okay. If they have a little more income, there's some other options with it, but they, they get a little more complicated. Well, and then there comes the time when a musician says, well, my instrument has expenses, the things I use on my instrument has expenses. Mm -hmm. And and so do those become write-offs in the world of music and taxes? Yeah, they absolutely do. So, you know, I play viola, and so the rosin for my bow, when I have to purchase that, if I were gig gigging, then that would be an expense I could take. Somebody who plays a brass instrument, may have valve oil that they need. So there's lots of different uh, types of expenses, but anything related to that instrument is definitely going to be a write-off. Let me pause for a moment and step over to you, Sammy. Is that something that musicians who typically, typically play, say, with the symphony or or do side things with music, do they know that right off? Some do and some don't. And I mean, I, it's why I'm kind of glad, you know, we're sitting here with Lori and she can kind of explain what some of those deductions are and what some of those write-offs are because some musicians don't even realize if you have to purchase music for a performance, you could write that off. Mm -hmm. Or mileage that you're not being mm -hmm. reimbursed for, you could write that off. There's a lot of things that um, musicians can take advantage of when they're doing their taxes. Now, there are also a lot of musicians, and I know this to be true because you've told me about lessons that are given in the community exactly. and people give people the opportunity to learn their craft and hone their craft. Maybe they have an office in their house or a place where they do that. Is that also something you can write off? It is. All of their house expenses and their specific expenses related to that area, as long as it's an exclusive use for business. Okay. Now, if it's the spare bedroom and the kids come over and, you know, the nieces and nephews come over and, and spend the night in there, then it's not a write-off quite so much. But as long as it's normally used and exclusively used for business, then it is. Um, what about when it comes to, um, you talked to me once about that self-employment tax. Mm -hmm. And, and I will tell you, Sammy, when she gave me the, the number, it looks a lot different when it comes out of your paycheck from your employer. <laughs> when you say 15.3%, it seems like a lot. But is yeah. that also something with self-employment that if you're giving lessons or you're doing this gig on the side or, you know, part of a group that you have to consider? You absolutely do. If you have a profit, you're going to be paying not only income tax for the federal and the state that you're in, you're also going to be paying that self-employment tax that as an employee, you get to only pay half of it, but your employer is going to pay the other half. So when you're self-employed, you are the employee and the employer. You get to do both halves, and that's a little over 15%. It's a lot, isn't it? Is it is a lot. My mom owns a small business, and she talks about that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're a musician, I think about, um, you know, you're not consistently necessarily doing these gigs. You maybe don't right. consistently have the, the student coming in and learning. So it, it may really add up over time. It can. And, you know, I have a lot of colleagues that... Um, uh, 
private teaching is their main source of income. You know, they might have 40 or 50 private students. Um, and the, the big thing for them is um, understanding how to, they got to report that cash mm -hmm. because a lot of times kids will pay with cash. Um, but then, you know, there's also the option of paying your taxes quarterly, is there not? That's right. Have it, paying those estimated taxes, especially if you're going to owe more than a thousand overall, you want to pay quarterly. And that's where tracking and having good record keeping are going to come in and be very handy. So it's important to keep track of everything. Yes. What about keeping track of royalties? This is a whole nother topic that fascinated me because I think when we hear the word royalties, we think Taylor Swift, you know, we think that level of person but the smallest person can get a royalty, right? I mean, that's how it works, I assume, in the music business and in the taxing world. Yeah. Well, most of the time where, where I've seen royalties is there's a contract in place and there's somebody who's going to be sending out that 1099 that tells you what the royalties okay. are because you may not know which radio stations are playing your song or or where all of that royalties is coming from. But whoever's tracking that is going to send you, here's how much you received in royalties this year. I, I know you deal with that on a different side from, from maybe a legal standpoint when it comes to things like that. But, but on the side of the musicians that are part of a symphony or part of a local band. Um, are there times when, when your music that you've scored or written or put together becomes something much more than just used for yourself? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we have a composer in residence with the symphony. His name's uh, Dan Powers. He also teaches composition at ISU. And I'm sure that's absolutely the case for mm -hmm. him mm -hmm. specifically. Yeah. yeah, yeah, which is really cool to me that you have a composer in residence. Yes. What yes. a cool title to yes. have. I'd like to have one like that <laughs> yeah. one day. Let's talk about for um, for the musician who it is their livelihood, like you were talking about, lessons can be their livelihood. Music is what they do. Is there a certain level they get to where it makes sense to learn what the strategies are because they could really save a lot of money? Well, I have found in the tax business that once somebody is making a net profit, that means after their expenses of about 30000 or more, there are really some good tax strategies that can save them on especially that self-employment tax. Mm -hmm. But you've got to be wise and you've got to educate yourself or come to somebody like us where, <laughs> where we can already have that education and just help you uh, navigate it. You know, I think it's so important, and that's what we I've learned from you mm -hmm. through our Tax Tip Tuesdays, is that there are so many loopholes and ways to save yourself money. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, whether you're making a lot or making a little, you really want to keep as much as you possibly oh, can. I mean, <laughs> that's ultimately the goal. And I right. think of musicians and those who are artists in our community. And, and again, they're doing it because they love it, Sammy. They're not doing it because they're getting rich in Tarot, Indiana. <laughs> uh, you know, but it's true. And so right. if you can save some money, what a wonderful source. Oh, right? absolutely. I always recommend if, if I have a friend that comes to me and they're asking me, I, I don't know how to do my taxes. And I said, you know, go find someone that does. Hire yeah. a professional. It's not that expensive. Get somebody that truly knows what they're doing, understands those deductions, and can save you some money. Your yeah. website is a good source, right? Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. what is your website? So at StadlerTax.com, we've got some resources on there, a little bit of information, and then, of course, contact information to, to dive in a little bit deeper. Some of those strategies we talked about, they might find those too. They might find a little bit of information about them there. <laughs> okay, Can't perfect. Can't give away all your secrets. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the secret's out now. We know that you play yeah. with the symphony. So what what you play, what did you say? I play viola. Well, how cool is that? Yeah. She's, yeah. she's a great little advocate for <laughs> oh, the symphony. So, and you've been with the symphony for over 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, scary it's, to think. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So, and I've been playing principal clarinet with the symphony for 10 years now. 10, this is my a decade. Tenth, it a decade. Seem like it's been that long. It does not seem like it's been that long. I was thinking of that the other day too. Yeah. I, I remember my first season out, and in fact, we're playing a piece on this next concert. Okay. In April, our next large orchestra concert at Tilson. Um, um, that we played on my very first season here. Oh, and yeah. it's just kind of a nice reminder, a little bit of nostalgia, mm -hmm. and just to see how far the symphony has come in yeah. the last 10 years, you know, despite the pandemic. Well, you all have grown a lot. And what yes. I love is the community is really embracing you more and more. So we have some upcoming concerts. Absolutely. Would you mind yes. if we talk about some oh, of the things please. you have up and coming? Because I know we got a lot going on, so Absolutely. I want to make sure we get some time to talk about yeah. that. Tell me what's coming up. So the next one is this Sunday. 
March oh, wow. 19th. Okay. And Lori and Stadler Tax have been amazing in helping us um, sponsor a TV commercial and this podcast. So they're our media sponsor. Uh, they'll be listed in the program book as such. Wonderful. Um, this is also, at Rose Holman, right? This is at Rose Holman at Hatfield Hall. Um, we've also got Viribus Wealth Management sponsoring it, the Symphony League, Robert Cowden, um, and then Hometown Savings Bank. And it's going to feature nine to 13 musicians on stage okay. performing Dvorak's Wind Serenade and Brahms's uh, Second Serenade, which is what our artistic director, David Bowden, he did his dissertation on Brahms's Second Serenade. He knows a little bit about he that. He knows a lot <laughs> yes. about it. And so we're going to get a very special interpretation of this piece because he's done oodles of research mm -hmm. and he knows what the composer intended for that piece. So I'm really excited to work on that piece with him. Then in April, we've got two concerts. On April okay. 1st, we've got Musical Treasures and that's going to feature uh, a little bit of everyone in the orchestra, particularly our principal tuba, Glenn Dimmick. Mm -hmm. He's playing a piece by Brian Sadler called Journey for Tuba and Orchestra and it's a 17 minute piece with a tuba out front. You don't see that very often. No, the tuba is <laughs> usually the guy in the exactly, back. <laughs> exactly. And this piece is so so cool guys it sounds like action movie music i mean it's amazing i'm so excited to share it with the community i think it's going to bring in a lot of different different people uh and then our last concert um that's at Tilson is uh, April 29th. It's Brahms and Tchaikovsky's. We're going to feature our concert master, Elena Rubio, on the Brahms Violin Concerto. And I I can't express enough how amazing Alina is. I mean, she is a world-class violinist, and we are so lucky to have her here in Terre Haute. So I'm very excited to have her play the Brahms Violin Concerto. As you prepare to wrap up the season, of course, you'll be looking ahead to next year. Oh, starting yes. Starting to get excited about everything coming up. Oh, absolutely. We definitely have some uh, secrets up our sleeve <laughs> that we're excited to share. We're currently working on next season. I can tell you that the repertoire and the dates are already solidified. We have our guest artists all solidified. And our season subscribers are going to get a sneak peek here in a couple weeks of nice. what's coming up next season. For the rest of us, where do we go when we want to learn more about the symphony and the seasons ahead? You can go to our website, uh, thso.org, or uh, follow us on Facebook. We are constantly posting on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, we hope to announce next season um, during our April 1st concert. It's going to be our first public announcement, uh, and then we'll have it up on our website the following week. Wonderful. And they can also watch Good Day Live, because I'll tell them you're coming back oh, to visit yeah. me real soon, too. We will. We'll be and back. Here's the thing. I'm going to convince her to bring, bring her clarinet. I don't know. I have to twist her arm, and you're not going to get out of Tax Tip Tuesday without the the viola. So I, I don't know how this is going to work out, but I'm going to figure out a way to get you two to play some music on the show, if that's okay. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining absolutely. us today. Lori, thank you for your support of the community and of oh, the symphony. Absolutely. And again, musicians, really, it's it's an important topic because a lot of them out there don't know how to make sure they're getting the most out of that yes. uh, tax return. So right. thanks, guys. Thanks Appreciate your us. time. It's once again, a great podcast with Good Day Live. We thank you for joining us. We'll see you soon.